Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. Today I want to touch a subject which I encountered uh, a lot uh, from your messages, which is uh, how to diagnose a flight controller. So what I want to point out from the beginning is that our setups are open frames and because we are using open electronics, it means that all the pads, connections, parts and all the stuff that's on a flight controller could be messed uh, with by our hand outside the influence like water and um, stuff like that. So I want to point out today what you have to check on a non-working flight controller, find out the culprit and um, try to repair the board. Okay, first we have to lay down the basic uh, construction of a flight controller and I can assure you that 99% uh, of flight controllers use the same um, topology and here I draw a basic diagram of a flight controller so the main component on a flight controller is of course the microcontroller unit and we also have the gyro the flight controller works uh, pretty simple the gyro reads the rotation speed on each axis if there is no rotation speed it means that the quad sits still and then sends the information to the MCU that obviously has some sort of um, software on it be it Betaflight, Raceflight, KISS or any other flight controller software and then the software decides which ESC has to spin its motor faster or slower and if we want to change the quad attitude, we then connect the receiver and send information to the microcontroller. Also, if we want to connect this microcontroller to the USB to change parameters inside the software, we have the USB, which can connect to a computer. Okay, so now let's talk about power requirements that we need to have on a flight controller. First of all, we have the gyro and the microcontroller that most of the time have 3.3 volt and receivers are uh, powered from a 5 volt supply. Okay, so first, there are two types of fly controllers. The ones that connect straight from uh, the LiPo voltage, which is this one here. And you have a 5 volt switching regulator, which takes the LiPo voltage and steps it down 5 volt and also other types of flight controllers that don't have this switching regulator and they have to be powered from a 5 volt supply. So after we have 5 volt we arrive here with a 5 volt from the external source but in the same time you can connect the USB from the PC which also supply a 5 volt. So to separate the external 5 volt from the USB 5 volt, most of the fly controllers use this type of arrangement where you have two diodes, one on the external line and one on the USB line meeting up on the actual fly controller 5 volt line. And the reason is pretty simple. You don't want to feed 5 volt from the external line back to the USB because uh, a lot of bad things could happen from that. So to separate the supplies you just use these two diodes and that's because diodes conduct current only in one direction and in this particular uh, situation they uh, lead current from left to right and not from the right to left. The USB 5 volt goes from here to here but doesn't go back and the same applies for the 5 volt external supply. After we got our 5 volt here, then we can do two things. One, send this 5 volt to the receiver and also send this 5 volt to a 3.3 volt regulator, which in most cases is a low drop uh, voltage regulator, a uh, linear regulator that uh, feeds the MCU and gyro. On some uh, fly controllers you can uh, find two depending on what uh, other devices you have on board. Um, and that's it. So now I hope you got the big picture of how it works and uh, you can find this topology almost in every fly controller. Of course different. And why I say different? Because sometimes 
you can find uh, these two diodes packed into um, the same part a part with three legs one here one here and one here and other times you find these diodes like a single component okay so now let's see the topology we talked about uh, first on a KISS flight controller, this is the KISS uh, V2 flight controller. Here we have the positive connection from the LiPo, goes through this trace here, through this diode. Here we can see an LC filter for cleaning up some noises we can find uh, on the LiPo voltage. Here there is a diode, a Zener diode, for protecting against high voltage spikes. And that's it here. On the other side of the PCB, we can find our first regulator. And um, as we talked earlier, the first regulator on a flight controller is the 5 volt regulator, which steps down the LiPo voltage to 5 volt. Just after the regulator, we can actually see a diode here, which conducts from the output of the regulator. And here we have 5 volt. If we go back to the other side of the flight controller and look at the USB, we have the 5 volt coming from the USB through this diode, which conducts only from this side, which is the USB side, to this side. And here we have 5 volt. And this point here is the same like this one here, which means this. And that completes our um, diode section, which separates the LiPo from the USB power supply. And the second um, regulator we talked about is a 3.3 volt regulator. And guess what? This part actually has LG33 written on it, which is a 3.3 volt regulator powering the gyro and um, the microcontroller. If we go and uh, look at the race flight, this is the USB. We have the diode separating the USB from the rest of the board. And we have here another diode, which most definitely is the diode from the 5 volt supply, separating the external 5 volt from the USB. And I guess this point here and this point here connects together and powers this 3.3 volt regulator because this one doesn't have a 5 volt regulator, it only has a 3.3 volt regulator. And that's um, the same topology we talked about. I only showed uh, these uh, two flight controllers, but I can assure you that all other flight controllers have the same topology. The parts could be different, but if you follow the traces and uh, measure with your multimeter, you will find the same type of topology. The most common fault found on fly controller is the power section. Any of these uh, input uh, parts, like the 5 volt uh, switching regulator, one of these two diodes, the MCU can be killed if you apply LiPo voltage on any of the signal lines, uh, ESC receiver or serial connections. This 3.3 uh, volt regulator I haven't seen um, broken because most of them have uh, over current protection and if the MCU goes bad and this 3.3 volt line goes to ground, the regulator will uh, get hot but um, most of the time it will survive. What can you check to see if you have all the voltages present? First of all, you have to check the 5 volt output from this regulator if you have one. After that, check to see if you have 5 volt here from the USB and from an external source. Because if you only have 5 volt here from the USB, that means that this diode is um, broken and it's not connecting anymore this side to this side. Check the output of the 3.3 volt regulator to see if you have 3.3 volt. If you have less than 3.3 and I mean 0 point or 1 volt, it could mean that um, this 3.3 volt regulator is either to ground, shorted, or the 3.3 volt regulator is not working. The best uh, case uh, would be to disconnect this output pin from the PCB and check the voltage output on the 3.3 volt regulator, but unconnected to this line 
because uh, taking out the MCU or the gyro from the PCB, it's way harder than just lifting up a single uh, pin from this uh, 3.3 volt regulator. And um, with that, I think I told you all about what can you check on a flight controller to see what's bad and what to replace. Of course, this is uh, not an in-depth explanation. I will be here if any of you have questions. Please leave them in the comment section or contact me through social media. And as always, I hope this was helpful to you. And uh, don't forget to subscribe to my channel for future uh, content. And uh, see you next time. Bye.